Hi guys, Chris McNeil here. Just want to run uh, through the short video with you um, on troubleshooting issues for the scraper. This is based on a lot of questions that uh, I've received from the various Facebook groups and, and direct to my email, um, just about how to tweak things or, or why are we doing things one way and not another way or just general, general questions. Um, so first of all, one of the most popular questions is uh, unsuccessful URL scrapes. As you can see, I've just done a scrape here and I have something like, I don't know, 150 odd items on this spreadsheet and 11 of them have come through as unsuccessful. Statistically, you will expect unsuccessful results. Okay, As a rule, from about January to mid mid-November, about two to three percent of your scrapes are going to be unsuccessful. Now why is that? Well, a lot of it depends on just network stability, network connectivity. When you and I browse the internet, it's fairly normal, it's fairly consistent, but sometimes there's a little hiccup. You might have noticed that when a page doesn't quite load or when you, you just feel that you're waiting a split second too long. If that happens at the time that the scraper is running, then that little hiccup causes uh, the scraper to miss uh, a, a, a scrape, miss a URL. And it happens. It will happen. It's going to happen on about 2% of, of occasions. It's hard to say which items it's going to affect, but rest assured that well over 95%, 97% of your scrapes and your items are going to be successful and it's going to give you a true picture of what's happening with those products. Now, <clears throat> I gave a very specific time range, January to mid-November. The percentage of unsuccessful scrapes is going to go up as we get closer to Christmas. We experienced that just now in the 2014 uh, Christmas period where maybe 10 to 15 percent of scrapes were unsuccessful. That was because of huge traffic on all of the Amazon servers. So just be aware of that and be a little bit more vigilant near, nearer to Christmas. But look on the great side. Yes, a few of the scrapes are going to be unsuccessful, but when you've got so much going on in your life, when you're winding down stuff for the, the old year, when you've got family activity, when you've got many, many other things on the go, and you're processing sales like crazy, isn't it great that you can rely on a tool that is going to have at least 90% success rate in keeping you, uh, keeping you um, uh, up to date? Now, how do you correct this? Well, the easy thing is you just rescrape. Let's take, for example, these 11 here you're going to notice that that's higher than the 2 to 3% I quoted earlier. The reason is that I was rendering a massive video while this was going on. So unless you have a super duper modern computer, do not do other things. The scrape is fast enough. It just, you know, get up, go stretch your legs, grab a cup of coffee, come back, it'll be done. Don't be listening to music, don't uh, be downloading videos, don't be trying to write a major PowerPoint presentation. Just leave it be, let it do its thing, let it use the, the resources uh, that you've got. If you've watched the other training videos, you will see that the scraper burns through a hundred URLs in a minute. Might be a little bit slower on your machine, maybe a little bit faster, but it does its job, let it do its job. The thing about scraping, again, is you can't do it too often. If you do it too often, then Amazon servers are going to recognize that and they're going to block you. Eventually things reset, you know, the next day everything will be fine, you'll be back in business again. But don't scrape and scrape and scrape and scrape and scrape within a very short amount of time because then the Amazon servers are going to say, whoa, you're taking a lot of our traffic. We really need to give the traffic to paying customers. Okay. All right. That's the uh, that's the unsuccessful scrape issue covered. Um, right now, sometimes you get a security message when you open up a new version of the scraper. So I'm just going to close this one out. 
Right, on some versions, when you open up the scraper, you get a security warning. That's okay. This tool runs on macros, and you need to enable content for it to work. Sometimes a second security message pops up as well. Allow that to happen. Allow the, the macros to run. Okay? Uh, sometimes you're going to see, especially with Office 365, a file already open message. If that happens, just save your work, close out Excel, and reopen the scraper, and you're not going to see that again. On occasion, you're going to see a new folder get created called Swarm Agents. That's perfectly fine. That's what the scraper needs to work. Don't worry about that. It'll get created in whatever folder you're using the scraper in. So it's on the desktop in my case. So this folder got created on the desktop. But if you're running it out of another folder someplace, that's fine. You'll see this folder pop up and that's normal. Um, there's some confusion around uh, currency and currency fees. So let me just recap this again. If you're trading out of market, you're probably going to have a currency exposure. What does that mean? If I'm in the UK and I'm selling on eBay.com, when I sell a product, my customer in the United States is going to pay me through PayPal in US dollars. PayPal does not offer in the UK a credit card or debit card which will allow me to make my purchase on Amazon in US dollars. You must take your US dollars and convert them to sterling if you're in the UK or to euros if you're in France or Canadian dollars if you're in Canada. And then you're going to use, you're going to transfer the money to your, your payment card, your debit card, your credit card, whatever. And then you're going to buy on Amazon.com, which of course is going to sell to you in dollars. So you lose your currency uh, uh, on currency exchange once when they pay you. And you lose on currency exchange a second time when you buy. It's the same principle as if you went on holiday. If I went to France or Spain or Canada or wherever, I would be using my UK credit card and then I would have to pay a premium to pay my hotels or my meals or whatever. So in the case that I have with my bank, I've calculated that the entire exposure to currency fees, so the combined selling to my eBay customer and the combi combined with buying the Amazon product, those two together cost me around 6%. It depends on the relationship that you have with your bank. Sometimes you might have a very favorable relationship where the, uh, where the, the exposure is a lot less. Maybe it'll be 2%, 3%, maybe it won't be anything. So whatever is unique in your situation you should add currency fees here to make sure that that's covered in your price and you're not taking a loss. If you're in the US, selling in the US on eBay.com, you don't need to worry. You set this at zero. If you're in the UK, selling on eBay.co.uk, you set it to zero. But if you're out of those markets, then you need to build something else in there, some, some rate to protect yourself. Okay, uh, other questions that I've gotten are in terms of other versions um, and what version does this run on? The scraper has been tested to work on Microsoft uh, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8. It has been tested to run on Excel 2003, 2007, 2010, 2013, which is also known as Office 365. We are very soon planning a release for Macintosh. So Mac users, it's coming. OpenOffice is in discussion, but that's coming too. A lot of people have asked us about Elite and the Elite version. That is coming as well, but we really need to get the same common stable platform out to all 
pro users first. The question that comes up over and over again is how much is this product? DS is a very collaborative and sharing organization. We know that we know that right from the top and and everyone from Kevin, Hitesh and, and Roger all the way down have a very positive, proactive, helpful mentality. I would love to be able to give this away for free. It relies very heavily on donations. We do request donations to keep up uh, the, the long hours of development and ongoing support of this product. What is a typical donation? Most users typically give between $20 and $30 US. If you want to benchmark something, that would be great. If you can afford a dollar, that would be great. We very much welcome any support that you offer, and that's what keeps this product going and uh, continually being updated. Okay, guys, hope that answers your questions. Happy scraping.